was natural kid complaining about school and I thought if there was a device that could just upload in memories to a human brain access the human brain like a hard drive upload download information we wouldn't have to worry about school upload all the information there this show shows how that could lead to the apocalypse the apocalypse yeah and this show this show the really good idea um i was really surprised when i read this um on netflix and i like read the little summary i was like oh not summary but like premise oh so basically the plot is dollhouse is an organization company that programs people when i say programs like a computer um they even call their pe their employees programmers um i'm breaking out a little bit right there yeah hello um so they basically just get people to volunteer put them in this chair wipe their memories and for five years of their life have them do whatever that their client needs their client will say oh i need the perfect date they'll program that person to be the perfect date so yeah it's pretty <laughs> good idea kids playing kids playing with matches can burn down the house um so the main character, Echo, Eliza, Dushku, Faith, whatever, um, is a doll. That's what they call them, dolls, program people. Way smarter than they think. She, when she, when she was a regular person, she, she wanted to bring down Rossum, which is the corporation behind Dollhouse. She wanted to bring them down, and then later she found out about the Dollhouse, and she's just like, ah, you know, morally wrong. And she, although she does, she kind, of, although most of the time dolls or volunteers she kind of gets forced into doing it in a way and she starts remembering stuff because her desire to set them free is so strong that she starts remembering things and yeah then there's one of the subplots the character of alpha was a doll and he got so many personalities uploaded into him that he went crazy and he killed a bunch of people. He has a knife, and one of the characters is played by Amy Acker slash Fred, and she has scars all over her face because he, he went crazy and just slashed up. And killed a bunch of dolls, but he avoided Echo. He just, like, killed a bunch of people, all the dolls surrounding Echo, and she's just sitting there like, huh? Because, you know, when they wipe their memories, they're just nothing, so she's like, ugh, potato. Um, anyway, the other plot is Paul Ballow. He is an FBI agent who's trying to track down the dollhouse. He's played by Tubmo Pennykit from Battlestar. Hilo. Yeah. So let's get into the characters. The main character is Echo. Very interesting character. She's a doll, so when she, they take the personality out of her, she's just kind of... Uh, just nothing. But then, she starts remembering. She starts developing a personality of her own. It's not... Caroline, the original person, it's Echo. It's a completely different person, same body. See how she develops over time into a person, and that's really cool to see. The next character is Boy Langton, played by Harry Lennox from The Matrix. He's Echo's handler. Each doll has a specific, you know, caretaker person that, slash bodyguard. He's hers. He's a good natured, he's a calm guy. He's Harry Lennox in general, who's just, mmm, 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 yeah. But then he goes and beats up a bunch of people, so he's cool. He doesn't necessarily believe that the dollhouse is doing right. Like, when they suggest to put someone in the chair to make them do it, when they suggest that, um, he's like, mm, no, that's wrong, no, um, yeah. Then there's Topher Brink, played by Fran Kranz. He's the dollhouse's programmer. He's a really, like, nerdy dude, you know? He's, like, got, you know, the Xbox, the refrigerator, the juice boxes, stuff. And he is mostly comic relief, but he is my favorite Dollhouse character, um, just because of his story arc. Not in this season, but in season two, he just has a good, great story arc. Um, he's the guy, he doesn't care about morals. This show does primarily deal with morals, but he doesn't care. He's just like, oh, cool, I'm getting paid a few million dollars to program people. You know, he gets to, he, it's fun for him, I mean, he gets to, gets to make a people, so... Come on, that's not, that's not the slightest bit tempting? Making your own people exactly how you want them? Hmm. Then there's Paul Ballard, played by Tomo Pennicott. And like I said, he's an FBI agent hunting Dollhouse. A lot of people do not believe the Dollhouse exists, but he does. He becomes obsessed with finding it. In the first episode, he 
Alpha, it's later revealed to be Alpha, but that's not that big of a spoiler, it mails him a picture of Caroline slash Echo, and so he makes it pretty much his life goal, his obsession, is to hunt down and just hunt down the dollhouse. And you see how he becomes, oh, okay, so I was assigned to, to, I'm gonna do this, just obsessed. Like, he's like Amazing Spider-Man 2 obsessed. It's this big wall of things, or... Sherlock Holmes obsessed in that movie, in the the, the Rob, second Robert Downey Jr. movie, where he makes that big roots full of papers and like threads them together, connects them. Yeah. The next character is Victor, played by Enver Jokai. He, I am gonna spoil something here. Not that big of a spoiler, because it ends up being the first big twist in the series, and if you make it to like episode three, you'll figure it out. But, like it'll show it, but um, so I'm just gonna spoil this one thing, and it's not, it's not that big of a deal. Victor slash Anton Lubov is a doll, the Russian guy, yeah. He's the, the first big twist in the series. Originally, Lubov was assigned to Paul Ballard to kind of throw him off their trail. He was a doll. But, um, he ends up, you know, becoming more of a doll in a series, and he helps Echo on several little missions. He does one of the things, he falls in love with another doll. Not, not his original guy, Anthony, him, Victor, the... You know, guy that has no memory, no personality, just the kind of sitting there, oh, guy that can hardly even say a few words, falls in love. And that is really cool to see. <laughs> Joss Whedon genius, that's really cool to see. Then there is, um, Sierra, who is the doll he falls in love with. She's Australian, but Asian, and yet her name is Priya, which is Indian, so, hmm. Nah, iPad case is breaking, meh. She's another doll that has less of a point in the season. Um, she becomes Echo's best friend and helps her on several missions, but it's, once again, with all these characters, it's not until season two, except Paul. He's really, he's a season one dude mostly, but um, pretty much all these characters, Paul and Boyd, I'd say, are season one characters. Okay, I'll stop rambling. Get to the point. All the characters are season two characters. Season two is when they go through the story arcs, when they become different people, which is what J all of Joss Whedon's series are about, or in the case of Firefly, was supposed to be about. Just people becoming different, seeing them change. The next character is Adele DeWitt, played by Olivia Williams, a British woman. She is the head of the Los Angeles branch of Dollhouse. She oversees everything that goes on, becomes kind of an antagonist. Alright, so, spoilers, yeah. We all knew this was coming, so let's get to this time on the clock, this right there. On the clock, if you want to skip the spoilers. So, I didn't actually not see most of the twists coming, since this has so many twists. Um, the only twist that I knew, I looked on IMDb, and I saw that Alan Tudyk was listed as Alpha. So when Kepler first showed up, I was like, he, oh, he's Alpha. And then I was like, oh, he just, you know, is pretending to be the Kepler dude. And I was okay with most of them. I mean, Victor being it all, Melly being it all, that guy being out. Alan Tudyk being Alpha, um, I mean, I was like, oh, that progresses the series. The one I didn't see was having Saunders be a doll. I didn't see how that helped the series, how that made it more, more anything, really. I mean, I guess it kind of, there's the next few episodes, like, the interaction between Saunders and Topher, which is interesting, I like that, but she didn't really have anything else to do with it, though, um, so, yeah. Alright, overall, Joss Whedon, this shows how awesome Joss Whedon is. I mean, it's just, I love this, I love this show, I like what it does, I like the issues it addresses, I love its moral things. I liked this season, but the next season too was good. Um, I rewatched this season, um, and so, yeah, um, I, I'm probably gonna watch, rewatch season two, and I am gonna try to do reviews of Buffy, Angel, I already did Firefly, but I'm gonna try to do those as much as I can. Alright, so this show, this season, is overall 8.7 out of 10. Really good. Just great acting. Um, great everything. Um, I would just, I, this actually is the, my least favorite out of the four. Out of Buffy, Angel, Firefly, and Dollhouse. This is my least favorite. And this gets, this gets 8.7 out of 10, and it's, and it's my least favorite. So this just shows Joss Whedon's a boss. Alright, so see you guys later. Subscribe and bye.